Yo, what is going on guys? It is Necromancer Noob. Patch Notes 1.13 came out uh, the 29th, so a few days ago, but it doesn't mean we can't talk about it now. We got a decent amount of changes added to the game. Nerfs, buffs, fixes, anything along those lines. So we're going to talk about it. I'd like to hear from you guys, so make sure to leave a comment down below what you liked in this patch notes, what you'd like to see differently, what you want to see differently, and, you know, just anything along those lines. But without further ado, let's get right into it. It's a pretty lengthy one. So starting off these patch notes, we got the equipment changes. Increased poise damage of normal attacks for the following weapon types. Light great swords, backhand blades, hand-to-hand -hand arts, beast claws. Increased poise damage of dual wield attacks for the following weapon types. Straight swords, thrusting swords, curved swords, katanas, spears, whips, fist, and claws. Increased poise damage of the claws of knight throwing attack. Decrease the backstep and vulnerability window when the fine crucible feather talisman or the talisman of all crucibles are equipped. So in short, what was the main takeaway from those is the poise damage. A lot of those weapons are going to have better poise damage. It's going to break poise easier than it used to be. And for the Crucible Feather Talismans, there is going to be less of a window for you to be able to dodge whatever you're trying to dodge. So there's a chance you can get hit a little more often from that. Next on the list, we're talking about the skill, Savage Lion's Claw. The second hit on the follow-up attack is now easier to land. Decrease damage animation of the first attack against other players. So, got a slight nerf against other players, a slight buff with making sure that second hit attacks better. Let's be honest, I feel like the Lion's Claw was just better than the Savage Lion's Claw. At least it was a little more safer, a little more, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say, consistent? Uh, we're moving on though. Raging Blast and Blind Spot decreased in vulnerability window against other players' attacks. So it just means you're going to get hit a little more often, or you just have to time your dodges a little better. And finally, Palm Blast decreased poise amount generated when charging the skill. It's not going to break people's poises as much as it did before. I think that's a valid nerf to the weapon, but we move on to spells and incantations. First on the list of spell nerfs, we got Miriam's Vanishing. Decreased in vulnerability window against other players' attacks. Which people were doing some crazy stuff with that Miriam's Vanishing. You're just going to get hit a little more often, or you just have to time it a little better. Knight's Lightning Spear. Increased attack power of the initial Lightning Spear. Decreased attack power of the spears launched after the first one. Decreased poise damage of all spears generated by this spell. So, first one's going to hit better. The second ones and the ones after are just going to hit a little less than they used to, which isn't saying much because the spell, I'm sure, is still going to be very strong. But, main takeaway, pretty good nerfs and bounces right there. We move on to general balance adjustments. First on the list, increased damage animation of the light greatsword charge attacks against enemies other than players. Increase the stats and status of the following NPCs that can be summoned in some areas. Needle Knight Lita, Pure Blood Knight Ansbach. Thalier increases the attack power and damage negation of summoned spirits, excluding the Mimic Tear when the revered Spirit Ash Blessing is at 5 or more. Increase the attack power and damage negation of summoned spirits, excluding the Mimic Tear when upgraded to plus 8 or higher. So what's the main takeaway? All the spirit summons got buffed, except for the Mimic Tear, it stayed the same. Summons got a slight buff depending on those NPCs if you summon those as well in specific locations, and... That light greatsword charge attack is just going to be slightly stronger against enemies. But we move on to the armaments. Increased attack power scaling when upgrading the following armaments. Repeating crossbow, spread crossbow, rebath's cannon. Which is good to see, those just got slight buffs in the weapon scaling. Shield of Night, increased damage negation when blocking physical attacks. Slight buff to it. Euporia, the twin blade, increased holy damage when the weapon has its luster restored. Decrease the number of attacks required to restore the weapon's luster. Increase the duration of the luster restoration effect. Slight buff to that weapon all around. Golden Lion Shield. Increased guard strength, making it a little more viable for, you know, taking hits. Golem Fist. Added a damage hitbox to the hand portion of the ranged fist attack. That got a change to the hitbox. That's good to see. Smith Grip Great Hammer. Increased poise damage of the swing portion of throwing attacks. The projectile is unchanged. So, that just means when you're swinging it, 
it's going to have a little more of that poise damage, not when you're actually throwing it, but when you're spinning it. Spread crossbow. Decrease the generated status buildup when used with bolts that have status effects. Ailment talisman. After the onset of a status ailment, the status buildup or duration of said ailment will now be reduced immediately by a certain amount. Clarifying horn charm. Basic and plus one and plus two. Increased focused resistance. So what's the main takeaway from that? Ailment talisman got a slight buff and the spread crossbow got a slight nerf when trying to use status buildup. Next on the list, we're going over the skill changes. Savage Lion's Claw, increased attack power and poise damage of the first attack. It's a slight buff to the Savage Lion's Claw. Swift Slash, reduced movement distance when using this skill. Extended recovery time. So, it takes a little longer to recover, and the movement distance, you're not going as far as you used to. Overhead Stance, increased attack power against enemies other than players. So, we got a slight buff in PvE. Aspects of the Crucible Wings, increased attack power, increased directional control, as well as amount of poise generated when using this skill. I think that's a good change because, I'll be honest, I think the Crucible Wings skill was a little bit lackluster and a bit on the weak side. Next, we got the Light Speed Slash. The additional light attacks are now affected by the attack power and ability scaling of the weapon. So that's a nice little change added to that. Rancor Slash, increased attack power of the Vengeful Spirits. Increased stamina damage against guarding enemies. Overall, pretty good. I feel like the Rancor weapons were a little on the weaker side. Revenger's Blade. Increased directional control for follow-up attacks after a strong attack. So you just get a little more control in that uh, follow-up attack after the strong attack for the Revenger's Blade. That's a nice little change to it. Next, we got Horn Calling. Increased attack power against enemies other than players. So that's a PvE buff right there. Horn Calling Storm, increased attack power against enemies other than players, another PvE buff. Weed Cutter, increased the speed of attacks. Slight buff to the Weed Cutter's skill art. Romina's Purification, increased poise value when using this skill. Red Bear Hunt, increased attack power, increased poise value when using this skill. Slight buff all around. Rancor Shot. Decreased status buildup generation when used with arrows that have status effects. So slight nerf to that if you're going to be using status effects and spamming those homing shots on enemies or people. Repeating fire, adjusted attack power to compensate for increase in weapon damage. Feeble Lord's Frenzied Flame. Reduced frenzy status effect buildup against enemies. Revenge of the Night. Increased poise damage and attack power when the skill is used immediately after guarding against an enemy attack. Next on the list of changes are spells. Glint Blade Trio, increased attack power. Blades of Stone, adjusted attack power of the first, second, and third charge attacks. Increased attack power of the non-charged attacks, increased attack power of the first hit of the charge attack, and reduced attack power of the second and third hits. Increased attack range and attack speed. We got Glintstone Nail, increased attack power and improved enemy tracking. Glintstone Nails, increased attack power and improved enemy tracking. Impenetrable Thorns, everyone's favorite, all generated impenetrable thorns will now track enemies. Decreased attack power and poise damage, decreased the hemorrhage status buildup and stamina damage against guarding enemies. Nerf for the most part all around, uh, there's a little bit better tracking for the thorns. Rings of Spectral Light, increased attack power and frostbite status buildup. Vortex of the Putrescence, increased attack power and frost status buildup. Main takeaway for the spells, just about buffs for all of those except for impenetrable thorns because fuck impenetrable thorns. Just kidding, let's move on. Incantations. We have a slight buff with Minor Ur Tree, increasing HP recovery amount. Land of Shadow, improved enemy tracking. Spira. Increased attack speed. Watchful spirit. Improved enemy tracking. Divine beast tornado. Increased attack power. Enemies hit by the tornado will now be launched upwards. The tornado will be less likely to disappear due to collision with the terrain. Overall good changes because I feel like the divine beast tornado was a bit on the weak side. Rain of fire. Big change right here. Increased attack power. Reduce the interval between each hit. Big changes right there because Rain of Fire sucked. We got Roar of Rugalia, increased poise damage and attack power. Uh, that's a good buff to see as well. Furious Blade of Onsbach, 
increased attack power, and rotten butterflies, increased scarlet rot status buildup, reduced the interval between damage ticks, increased attack range. Overall, most of the incantations got some decent buffs right there. Next on the list, we got Spirit Ashes. Wait, this has to be wrong, right? I mean, why would they be updating the Spirit Ashes when you're not supposed to use them? I'm really confused. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, in short, there's not a whole lot of changes, but just about every single Spirit Ash summon is going to be able to take hits a little better. They're not going to be staggered as easily. So, I mean... I'm not going to go through the list because it's basically every single Spirit Ash summon. Now, I'm going to go over some of the major buffs like the Warhawk. Increased HP, physical attack power, and fire attack power. Increased stance status. But, land squirt. <laughs> Pause. Increased HP will no longer stagger as easily. You know, you get the gist of it, right? Like I said, I'm not going to torture you guys. Just about, well, okay, let's put it simple. If your name isn't Mimic Tear, you got a buff as a Spirit Ash Summon. Whether it's just your damage output, more health, uh, you just take hits better. It, we move on to the bug fixes. First, we got change the default selection of the OK slash cancel prompt that shows up when using the Spectral Steed Whistle. While the Spectral Steed is dead, the default selection position is now OK. That's just going to make it a lot quicker if your torrent gets messed up, you got to re-revive it. Uh, you don't have to you know, do the quick little switch and make sure it's on the right one. It's going to be on the right one right off the bat. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not going to go over a lot of the bug fixes. There is a decent amount of them, and a lot of them are minor changes or things that haven't affected a whole lot of people. So I'm not going to go over it. I do apologize if that's what you're looking forward to. I'll leave a link at the bottom, so if you want to look at it yourself, feel free to be my guest. But another thing worth adding at the very end of this is also... At the end is a list of possible unstable performance fixes. If you're having any troubles on PS5, Xbox, PC, PS4, you name it, try out one of these. If you're having performance issues, make sure to just pause the screen, maybe take a screenshot, give it a try. But other than that, that is about it. That covers the patch notes for 1.13. So let me know what you guys think. What did you guys think of the overall buffs and nerfs? I think they did a pretty solid job. I know some people complained it took longer than they wanted, but hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Anyways, I hope you guys like this. There's more Elden Ring videos along the way, Remnant 2, a lot of other videos along with that as well that I plan on making, so stay tuned for that. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, and like I said, I want to hear from you guys. I try my best to comment back to all your guys' replies. So let's talk about these buffs and nerfs, and what do you want to see in the future of Elden Ring? But I will see you all later in a future video. Bye bye Why am I begging about rolling? Oh my god! <laughs> Why am I fat? Oh my god, my room. I don't have my rune. <laughs> I didn't activate the rune. Throw one. Boy! Oh, he's immune to rot. Oh, that's, he just... I dodged every one of those. Just <laughs> because he switched to me like halfway through. Mm. Oh. oh, I forgot about that. Alright, you kill this dude and then meet you up there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're not gonna believe it! Oh, I seen it. <laughs> oh my god. I'm about to go insane on this fucking guy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hell? I'll be right back. He is <laughs> do what dead. you gotta do. <laughs> He's... Fucking expired. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do. His days are done. One shot. Get the fuck out of here. You <laughs> suck. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Sound like he had that name and number for a second.
Uh uh, I just had to speed dial. I just had to show him what was up. <laughs> while they call me 